Hey everyone, it's Dan and G here from Guitar Gear Giveaway. We're here because we are just explaining a little bit about the charity competition that has just been launched. Geraint, for most of you who won't know, was diagnosed with MS a long time ago. So this is just to share a little bit of his story and why we're doing what we're doing. Geraint, when were you first diagnosed with the disease and how did that affect you? So I was uh, diagnosed actually when I was 19. Um, and that was a, the first sort of thing I saw, sort of like experienced before realising I had anything wrong was actually numbness in my feet, which works its way up from my legs, which is quite alarming as you can imagine. And, uh, you know, uh, before that point, I thought absolutely everything was fine. I remember at the time uh, when uh, me and Garrett have known each other for years and years, and I just remember you giving me a phone call and saying, I'm in hospital, I can't feel my legs, they don't know what's wrong. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much exactly the conversation we had. How long did it take them to come to the conclusion that you had MS and what were the other kind of things that they said that you might have, the kind of emotional journey that you had to go through whilst they came to the conclusion of what you had? So I was actually relatively lucky. For a lot of people, there's a lot of misdiagnosis there's a lot of testing, there's a lot of delay in actually finding out what's wrong with them because MS presents itself in so many different ways. Um, my symptom was one of the more common ones, which is sensory. Some people have issues with vision, um, but mine was relatively quickly diagnosed. So I had to go into hospital, I had a lumbar puncture, which is, for those who don't know, a removal of spinal fluid which then has to be tested and it shows if there's any white blood cells etc available um, within that. I do have to run a number of tests on that which are all above my knowledge um, to give a idea if you have MS or not followed by an MRI brain scan uh, to see if there's any damage or scarring on your brain or your spinal column. At the time didn't know if it was a what you call CIS, clinically isolated syndrome, which is just a one-off event, which is, it could be, you know, down to any kind of swelling in your spinal cord. Um, it could be something else more, you know, even more worrying, like a brain tumour. Who, who knows? I was 19. I was scared. I had no idea. I remember at the time you said um, over a few phone calls that we had that they thought you might have a tumour in your spine. They... There was a number of little things that they went through before mm. they said, we've got the diagnosis, it's MS. That's right, yeah. That's right. So I was, yeah, 19 is very young to be diagnosed. Uh, like I said, a lot of people go through various stage of misdiagnosis um, and can live with it for absolutely years and years and years um, without having any kind of idea. Uh, for instance, you know Montel Williams? Yeah. Yeah, so very well-known talk show host. I think he first uh, presented... Uh, symptoms when he was in the forces, when he was in his what, 920s, something along those lines, and then later in life found out he had MS. So it's relatively common. So we're just on our way to one of our local music shops, a really interesting shop, GC Music and Collectibles in Taunton. Check them out uh, on their Facebook page and stuff. If you're in Taunton, pop in. It's a really interesting shop. They've always got cool stuff. So we're going to go in and see what we can find. For Garrett to mod. So let's talk a little bit about how it's affected you over the years, things like mm -hmm. symptoms, flare-ups, treatment sure. regimes, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I was quite lucky to get onto a treatment regime um, really quite quickly, so I went on to a self-injectable um, medication. So when I first went onto my meds, then there weren't very many available on the market. So over the years, that's changed quite drastically. So first thing I was on uh, was a uh, an injection which I had to carry about with me and uh, take you know once every other day, and try to remember to do that. Uh, so my first so my first uh, relapse or flare up, I recovered from really quite well. Uh, just had a few little lingering symptoms for about a year or so afterwards. I get little buzzy sort of sensations in my feet, but it wasn't too bad, you know. Um, a few years after that, I then had what we call optical neuritis. Uh, so I lost a lot of my vision in one eye. Um, so I had to go on steroids to treat that, to reduce any of that sort of swelling and try to speed up the sort of healing process there. 
luckily again, you know, touch wood, I regained my vision, no problem there. A few years again after that one, I then had a issue with balance, uh, again, which is quite a common symptom, which yep. is down to the movement of my uh, movement of my eyes. Um, and at that point, I moved on to a different medication, which was the first sort of like uh, um, oral tablet which was available, uh, which I found was effective for a good, you know, good 10 years, actually, I was on yeah. that one for. So obviously you keep mentioning that you are quite lucky with what you've been suffering with over the years mm -hmm. in terms of severity. Very much. What are some of the other things that other people can deal with? It's a massive list of things. So MS basically effect is an autoimmune defect, disease, it depends how you want to put it really. So essentially your, um, your nervous system can affect any part of your body and any function, which is quite daunting when you think of it. Uh, it's referred to as a sort of like snowflake disease because no one of us have the same symptoms or very, very rarely anyway. Uh, so it could be as mild as somebody having a bit tingling in their fingertips. It could be complete paralysis on the other end. Luckily, that's relatively rare, but it can happen, um, especially with different formats and forms of MS. So I have what's called relapsing remitting MS. So I'll have a flare up and then I'll get better. I might have a few residing sort of symptoms to deal with. Then I might have another flare up. Then I can go for a long period without any issues. Now, over time, that unfortunately uh, tends, or certainly in the past, tended uh, to go on to a more progressive sort of like disease stage um, where you'd get a slow and gradual build up of disability over time. Then there's the other end of MS, which are the people who suffer from primary progressive, which tends to be a more gradual build up from the point of diagnosis throughout um, which is some people would s suggest it's more aggressive it's just a different form really again people can have little plateaus when they're okay and then some people have a, that more aggressive format so on a side note while we're here looking for a guitar for garrett's mod <laughs> i'm buying something myself not something i expected to buy in a guitar shop but this is how cool this place is i'm buying a boglin <laughs> Used to be what I'm looking for is something which is going to be a really good platform for modding, um, a nice quality guitar which will be a good shell, good neck on it, nice frets, um, something that's going to be universally enjoyed. Uh, I did see this sort of like Highway 1 strat here. Kind of interest faded out brown, but I don't think everyone's going to go for that finish. I think it used to be mocha, but all the pigments gone out of it. I think it's quite cool. Okay, right. What else have we got here? I mean, this is cool, and this is kind of nostalgic because this is this could technically be a birth year guitar for me. Because 1985 to 86 contemporary strap, Japanese. The problem with that is it's already been modded. Technically, ish. It's got everything that I'd probably do to a strap, you know. Chunky humbucker in the bridge. Come nice pearlescent finish. Neat bizarre. Very cool. Let's put that one back. Okay. What else have we got here? And I've got a couple of straps, we've got a sunburst, which is always good. Uh, that's a black, it's got hot wheels and a bridge already, but that's a squire, so look for something nicer than a squire. Let's have a look at this one. Now that's got a nice blade in neck. Have a look at that. That looks really nice actually. Let's have a look. What do you reckon, Dan? I think that is a good classic guitar. It's one, a Strat, it's good modding bass, as we said. 
The one over there is a good modern base, but it'd be a bit of a shame when they're getting a bit rare. This is just a good classic guitar that we could definitely do something with to make it hot rodded and kind it's of like really cool. Yeah. Yeah. You want to okay. go for that one? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this. It's a nice weight. It's uh, the body's in good condition. The frets are in pretty good condition. A couple of little nicks on the neck, but you know, it's a maple neck. Feels great, but it's really nice and played in. So that's, uh, yeah, no, I like this. I like this. I'm not even going to worry about what the electrics are like in it because that's all going to come out. Right, let's go. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, could we go for this one? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, uh, knock off. I'll knock off thirty pounds, so it goes towards the uh, MS charity. Absolute right. star, man! No Thank you so much, man. Anytime. So obviously, this for you is year twenty since you've been diagnosed with mm -hmm. MS. Where are you at now? Is there any kind of recent development? Anything that's happened in the last few months that you want to share? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, I look pretty well, fit, healthy, and uh, I'm very, very grateful and very, very lucky that I can say that. Um, I kind of baffle my f uh, physician occasionally, um, but you know, I hope I can keep on doing that. But recently I had to go in for a MRI and unfortunately they did find that I'd had some disease activity. So we get lesions on your brain or little areas of damage and unfortunately some more of those have presented. So I had to change my medication and go on to a new form of medication which is actually a uh, now on on an infusion so i have to go in once every six months but it's showing a lot of promise it's looking like a very very good treatment path and uh, i'm still feeling good so although there's disease activity you know i'm not actually not noticing and i think that's a really good message as well is that where you are someone who's had recent disease activity mm small signs of progression is that you are still going forward you're still yeah. in gigging band still writing music still playing absolutely probably more than ever you know so you just got to sometimes people find that they've got limitations and it's about not giving up it's about not actually trying to think about those limitations or what might be just do what you can on the day and do it as well as you can so obviously with the recent progression that Garrett's had with the disease, you know, not great news, although still luckier than some, mm. I wanted to do something, pos put a positive spin on it so that we could look at raising money for those that suffer with MS. So I asked Garrett if he'd be comfortable to do this and also who he felt would be a great charity to benefit from us raising money and Garrett picked? Uh, the National MS Society. So essentially they've got the biggest outreach of all MS patients in the UK, uh, from the newly diagnosed to people who are living with long-term illness as well there. Uh, so they support a lot of research, uh, they support people in terms of advice, housing, Basically, anything that we can take for take for granted and have taken away from us, um, things like your job, your welfare, they are there to support you, and they have their own sort of like helplines. You can phone them for you know with any kind of questions, and they will always be there to talk you through your diagnosis, to talk you through medication choices, just to give you support. And for me, that's been absolutely valuable. You can go onto a website, you can research medication, you can research different, uh, again, different treatments, uh, people's life stories on there even. And it's a real beacon of hope for a lot of people, and especially when it comes to things along the research lines, uh, where there's a lot of people who, you know, sadly aren't in as good a position as I am at this stage, you know. So that network is absolutely valuable. I think one of the most important things that you touched on there is the fact that they are just there and it is a great resource for people with MS to really explain things and go through things because one of the things I remember when you came to me and you said that you'd had some bad news mm. and that there had been some progression is the letter from the doctor that you got, not everybody understands big 
technical medical jargon words, but when you get a letter from the doctor that says you've had progression in your disease and it's filled mm. with all of these big doomy looking words that just really hang over you, having a resource there, a charity that you can go to to say, hey, this is where I'm at, what are my options? Where especially in a time that waiting lists are at an all time high on the mm -hmm. NHS, that you can go to this charity and they can take you through different options and explain things better and just give you the kind of hope that you need in that situation. That kind of work is just completely invaluable. Absolutely. So there we go, guys. That is why we're doing what we're doing. Obviously, Geraint is, you say, relatively lucky. Absolutely. His disease is managed for now, but not everybody is in that situation. There are some people that have it a lot worse than Geraint has it. And that's what this is about, is raising money for a great cause. Obviously, Geraint is a gigging musician. He works with us here at Guitar Gig Giveaway. So that's why we said, hey, go out, find a guitar. If you can support a local business as well, GC Music and Collectibles, yep. great if they've got something. And then just mod it, do whatever the hell you want to it, and that will be the prize. So with that said, obviously, go out, buy some tickets for this. 100% of all the money from this, not just the profit, is going to the charity. It's for a great cause. Just show your support, guys, and we are really thankful.